When Jane and Bobby go for a ride, usually little Bobby who does the riding, well, big sister Jane does the pulling. But Jane doesn't mind. The runners are smooth, and the sled glides easily over the hard, well-packed snow. Mm, well, it did glide easily until it reached this bare spot where there isn't any snow. Have you ever wondered why it is so much easier to pull a sled on snow or ice than it is to drag it over a bare sidewalk or dry ground? A simple experiment will help to show us the reason. Rub a piece of cotton over a mirror. It slides easily on the smooth surface, doesn't it? Now, Rub it over a rough piece of wood. The splinters and bumps on the wood catch on the cotton and hold it back. It doesn't slide so easily on a rough surface, does it? If you look closely, you'll see that the ground is pretty rough too and full of little bumps which hold back the sled and make it hard to pull. We say there is a great deal of friction between the ground and the runners of the sled. Whenever two objects rub together, there is always a certain amount of friction which tends to keep the objects from moving. The smoother the objects, the less friction there is. Do you think there is much friction between the snow and the sled runners? Friction, because it keeps things from sliding easily, makes them wear out. For instance, the rough surface of the sidewalk rubs against the bottom of your shoes and tears off tiny pieces of leather. That is why the soles and heels of your shoes wear out, because of friction. Automobile tires wear out because of friction between the road and the rubber tires. Knives and scissors become dull. Pencils need sharpening. Machines wear out, all because of friction. We cannot do away with friction entirely, but can you think of ways to reduce it? One way, of course, is to make the parts that rub against each other as smooth as possible. The moving parts of machinery are made very, very smooth in order to reduce friction. Have you ever heard people talking about 17 jeweled watches? The jewels help to reduce friction. You cannot see them by looking at the outside of the watch. They are inside at the points where parts rub together. Jewels such as rubies and sapphires are harder than steel and can be polished to a very fine smoothness. Watches having a large number of jewels in them usually last longer than watches made entirely of metal. Yes, smoothness helps a great deal, but in most machines, ordinary smoothness does not reduce friction enough. Here is a piece of metal that looks and feels very smooth. But if we could examine it under a microscope, we would see that the smooth surface is actually covered with thousands of tiny bumps and holes. If two pieces of metal like this slide rapidly against each other, those tiny bumps still cause some friction. How can we reduce the friction even more? By putting grease or oil between the two moving parts, we can fill up all the little holes. 
Now the moving parts are actually sliding on a thin, smooth layer of oil, instead of rubbing against each other. Without oil, no machine could last very long, because friction would wear it out. Automobiles must be greased and oiled regularly. Sewing machines must be oiled. And your bicycles and roller skates will run more smoothly and will last longer if you oil them regularly. Have you ever tried to move a barrel? If you have, you know that it is much easier to roll it than it is to slide it. And so another way of reducing friction is to change sliding friction to rolling friction. Of course, that's easy if the object is round, like a barrel. But suppose the object is square, like a box. How can we use rolling friction here? That's right by putting rollers under it. And we can make our work still easier if we change the rollers to wheels. The wheel has been called man's most important invention. Without wheels to reduce friction, modern land transportation would be impossible. To make wheels roll more easily, we use ball bearings to reduce the friction between the wheel and the axle. You have seen that by reducing friction, we can make things last longer and we can make our work easier. But you should also know that friction is very useful too. Have you ever tried to turn a doorknob with wet, soapy hands? The soap and water reduce the friction between your hand and the knob. Now you need more friction to grip the knob hard enough to turn it. And so you'll dry your hands in order to increase the friction. We increase friction in many other ways too. Bottle caps are usually made with ridges on them to keep your fingers from slipping. The ridges increase the friction between your fingers and the cap. Automobile tires have rough treads on them to increase the friction between the road and the tires so they'll not skid. We use friction as a brake to stop moving objects. All brakes work by increasing friction. And we use friction in walking. Without friction, you couldn't walk because your shoes would not grip the ground. Now see if you can answer these questions. How does friction help you to write on the blackboard? What does this sign have to do with friction? And how is this Boy Scout making use of friction? 